Hey there, my name is Provis and welcome back to more oxygen, not included in the Super Duper Group base. Last episode we spent pretty much our entire time building up what I'm hoping is going to be a very successful gold volcano tamer. But unfortunately until this thing erupts in about 16 cycles, we will not know if it works or not. It's just kind of all wishful thinking. If, it's, if it does work, awesome! We're gonna have a source of some very hot, but otherwise relatively uh, hassle-free refined gold. If it doesn't work, I'm gonna cry. Um, there are other things that we need to be doing all in the meantime, though. I need more ways of getting refined metal. We've talked about it before and how this isn't gonna work. We've tried setting something up over here, but if, unless you use radiant pipes, turns out this setup doesn't work tremendously well, so that's not gonna cut it for me. So, I'm trying to think of some other alternatives. One thing we could do is try to make use of our cool slush geyser in another way. We have a lot of this cool water that's been sitting here, otherwise not being used too much, right? We are using that slowly to fill up some tanks and cool down some of our oxygen production, but it really can only do so much. Otherwise, it's just kind of wasted time. What we could do is set up another refinery over here Feeding cold water into it, not to recycle, but knowing it's going to go from minus 10 degrees up to like 20 or 30, and then just dump it in the tank. And that's a way of filling out my polluted water while also cooling things down and, ideally, making a lot more of fine material. I think that's something that we are going to do. Other things we need to worry about is our power situation, because one of the tricks of oxygen not included is you never really hit a point where you are completely sustainable, right, with your current setup, and then you're like, okay, now I can learn about a new production chain and make things more complicated. No, this game is always about controlling entropy. Things are going to be inefficient, they're going to cause hazards, they're gonna be an issue, and you've got to be dealing with them constantly or else eventually it catches up to you. The gradual heating of the base could turn into one of those situations pretty quickly if we're not careful. So I need ways of cooling down the base. The most efficient way I know how to do that, and by most efficient, I don't know if it's actually very efficient at all, but one way I know how to do that is to set up a giant freezer box using a steam turbine and some aqua tuners in order to create an extremely cold area that you then feed a lot of your gas through, which super cools the stuff and then distribute it across the base. It's kind of like a localized uh, air conditioning system. Just basically soaks the uh, energy away into a steam turbine. The only problem is, one, it's very expensive, we're gonna need a lot of steel and other stuff, which, you know, I don't have. Um, but also, it takes a lot of power. And I'm thinking about power, and I'm like, I don't really have great solutions for a lot of this, do I? I mean, yeah, I'm using up the natural gas generators, but they're not in a power plant getting maximum value. So we're kind of going through our natural gas very quickly. I've got coal, at least we're sustainable on that, but it's still not great. So I don't know, we're gonna need to think of some better ways of getting power. One uh, immediate thing we could do there's another natural gas geyser somewhere. I've forgotten where it is. It's over here somewhere. But we have another natural gas geyser. There it is. That we could uh, bottle off and then start feeding into the system. And that just kind of lets me double down on an existing system here. Or we could consider trying to dig all the way up to the top and build some solar panels using glass. That's a whole new production chain I don't have yet. And that's going to take a lot of power. Plus, it's going to generate a lot of heat. So I'm not super thrilled about that. Another alternative would be to get myself a petroleum generator. Now this, this would generate a lot of power, lots of it. But of course it takes petroleum as a fuel source. Well, we've got some oil. We've got some oil reservoirs. What I would need to do then is figure out a good consistent way of getting lots of oil with these reservoirs, pumping it into one area, and then turning it into petroleum. Now you might say, well you already do that with an oil refinery. That's true, but remember that this is very inefficient. It takes 10 kilograms of crude oil to make five kilograms of petroleum. So a lot of this stuff is lost. One of the better ways to go would be to create a petroleum boiler. Basically, if you can take this crude oil, get it up to a separate temperature, this stuff will automatically refine at a one-to-one -one ratio into petroleum. Obviously way more effective. Very hot petroleum, mind you, but very effective. But that means we need a source of serious heat. Aqua tuners aren't gonna be enough. I mean, they could be maybe, but it'd be really, really difficult. You know what's way better? Magma. Mm-hmm. Down all the way over here. The magma calleth to me. Either we need an active volcano, or in lieu of that, I need to just basically drill down to a magma and sort of spike the heat up and then turn that into a giant petroleum boiler machine. That 
would work. It's gonna take a little time to set up, and I'm not saying I can get it all done this episode, and I certainly can't get it done until I get a lot more refined materials, so, you know, priorities, priorities. But still, that is something I would very much like to do. All right, so we got some nice, cool water flowing out over here. And by cool, I mean, like, really cool. But it's flowing into our metal refinery. So if I make this a super high-priority job and just do some little test things, you know, copper, gold, iron, I don't care. Um, I'm willing to bet that this is going to be a much, much, much faster solution. Is it kind of a waste of a lot of the really good cold, polluted water? Yeah, kind of. But you know what? I'm kind of wasting this thing as it is. So this is a less egregious waste than what I've had before. So let's see how effective this is. It comes in at negative nine degrees. It leaves at, wow, negative three? Uh, that's actually a lot colder than I was expecting it to be. But again, like that's just really cold water getting dumped into the tank, which is gonna cool the whole thing down to something more reasonable anyway. Huh. Yeah, I should have done this a lot sooner. This was a very obvious solution. And I'm ashamed to say that it took me this long to get here. If we are going to try for some sort of a petroleum boiler making use of magma, something I need to keep an eye out for is as many diamond nodes as possible. I've talked about this sort of briefly before, but diamonds are an exceptionally good thermal conductor. They're very good for temp shift plates, but also, weirdly enough, they're very good for windows as well. You make windows literally out of diamond, and if I remembered exactly where those were all located, I would probably show you. There it is, window tile. Hang on, I can just show you this right now. So let's see, I've got a diamond window tile right here. It takes 100, I think, kilograms of tile, to, uh, sorry, diamond to make. As far as properties are concerned, thermal conductivity is a value of 80. That's really, really, really quite good. 80 DTUs per meter times second divided by Celsius degrees, uh, watts. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's a pretty it's okay. It's a very it's a very complicated unit. But regardless, this is a really high value, all right? As a reminder, something like let's say a regular tile might have 2.9, right? Something extremely small. So, you can imagine then that what we would want to do is dig down to the magma and if I set up a window like pillar, I guess, a spike of diamond windows into the magma, making contact with the magma, it would conduct a huge amount of heat up this spike, which means I could send that into an apparatus that then boils some oil, of which there's plenty around here, boil the oil, and then turns that into petroleum. There's a lot of similar machines that have been designed. They are all over the internet. I'm not creating anything really new and exciting here exactly, but I am trying to repurpose that for this base, because I desperately need a good source of power, and I think petroleum could be one way to do that. Oh, gosh dang it. All right, so I got down here to start um, analyzing a natural gas geyser, right? I mean, that's the whole idea. Analyze a natural gas geyser, because it said it was dormant. And as soon as I get down here, this is when it decides to go back into activity? Of course, literally as I'm looking at it. This thing's been dormant for what, like 70 cycles, and now it turns on the second I'm interested in it. Oh my god, what are the odds of that? Hmm, I'm actually very tempted to get myself another dupe. I could really use another dedicated builder, someone really talented in this, because we're not great at doing good building jobs. Alrighty, let's do that. It's going to be Endedu, or Darth Endedu. Perfect. Alright, welcome to the base. Hopefully you will prove yourself to be an incredible asset, even though you are terrible at digging. Do you start with any points? You do. Let's go ahead and get that improved construction up and running then, and make sure we get you a proper hat. I like the color of your hair, by the way, but you're gonna have to cover up. Uh, okay. Now, we really shouldn't be taking on too many more dupes than what we've already got. Um, mainly because, you know, food is pretty well sustained, but the more oxygen we're consuming and stuff, generally the worse. Also, um, I really don't think I need many more. If anything, the only additional dupes I should take on are going to be science and rocketry piloting based, right? Because that's the only thing we're actively missing. Someone who will be able to pilot a rocket. I just haven't bothered with it up to this point because... Well, like, why? I'm not going into space. Oh, gosh, and Dedu, look how slow you are in this exosuit, though. It's kind of pathetic. Uh, yeah, this is a very compelling reason why I don't want to take on a lot of new dupes. Just training them to know how to run in an exosuit is laughable. Laughable, I say. In the meantime, how are we looking down at the oil biome? Um, okay, we're finding a bit. I'm learning a bit more about the magma crust below me. 
We'll have to be very careful about how we try to intrude on this magma. You do it wrong and it basically erupts and it's kind of game over and there's no real way to contain it. Not, not easily anyway. We are uh, finding a whole load of diamonds and then I've discovered something over here. Hello. Um, this looks to me like it might be a gas geyser of some sort. I think I can mine here safely and find out for sure. Sure enough, it is a vent. It's a hot, polluted oxygen vent. Okay, wow. This releases polluted oxygen at 500 degrees Celsius? Ouch. Huh. I'm not totally sure what to do with this one, if I'm honest. I really don't know. I mean, I'd like to get into this thing and actually just analyze it for the sake of the databanks, but beyond that, I don't really know if I care. Hey, by the way, let's note that the gold volcano is active. Okay, hold on. First off, why is power off here? Looks like the power that came out of this did not last very long at all. That's fine. All we'll have to do is just rehook up the coal generator. No problem at all. So we actually did get a little bit of gold. There's 668 kilograms right there, currently sitting at about 100 degrees. There's a tiny bit more right here, 20 kilograms at 229. So if it sat in the water pool, it cooled down to something reasonable, but obviously we're still not producing anywhere near enough gold to create some serious steam. For now though, let's just go ahead and dump all the gold into this water pool. Pew, 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 there we go. Look at this, it's working. So call me crazy, but it sure looks to me like I basically just got like a free 800 kilograms of gold with practically zero effort on my part. See, I knew this was gonna be nice. We just have to see if it's a long-term sustaining system. Oh, here we go. Okay, now this thing is starting to actually turn everything into steam. So what's the temperature look like in here? It's very hot, 126 degrees. That is just barely over the temperature that would be needed in order to create some steam. So the steam is being dumped into the turbine, which is currently hovering at about 89 degrees, and the temperature is rising. No, it's actually sticking kind of close to that. Let's take a look at the plumbing over here. Yeah, the water is exiting at about 90, it says 93 degrees, but I think that's partly because it's picking up some temperature. Then it's dumping down over here. And once again, we should see that this gold is rapidly dropping in temperature. It's trying to equalize down toward that 125. Because all energy, for some reason, does seem to like going to an equilibrium state. So that's kind of doing its thing there. And the more extremely hot metal we dump in here, the hotter this steam is going to get to force it to go back up. Notice that once the temperature of the steam falls below 125, the turbine stops. So this isn't quite at a sustain point yet. We're just waiting for the gold volcano to erupt a couple more times. This metal is still very, very hot, but we're getting there. I'm gonna go ahead and call this a success. I'm not gonna say it's the most perfectly optimized system. It probably could be improved, but I'm gonna go ahead and say it seems to be working pretty darn well. Has it been one year? Sure enough, I've been playing this game for 365 cycles. One full year. God, I've accomplished nothing. Is that just what it's like getting older? You know, the years just go by and it's like, man, what did I do this last year? Answer, nothing. Oh my God, I'm a total waste of space. I don't know. That's kind of been my experience so far. At some point, you know, like when you're young, right? Life just sort of, it just sort of flies by and you're like, oh man, I never have time to do all the awesome things that I want to do. And it feels like life is so fleeting. And yet at the same time, it just goes on forever. You never think you're going to get any older. And then when you actually get older and you start working like a full-time job and everything else, it's just like, oh, I'm 32 now. Seems pretty much like the last few years, and it still went by fast, but I feel like I never had time to do anything I wanted. Great. Life is awesome. Hooray. Well, that's a sobering message. Yep, kids, there's a lot to look forward to, I promise. <clears throat> All right, at this point, I've explored enough of the bottom of the map to have a good sense of what I'm working with. So the next thing to do is to start setting up a load of scaffolds, like everywhere because I basically need to dig this entire area out to get all the oil to pool up in one place where it's very convenient for me to start uh, pumping all this up. And then we're gonna need a large space for, well, a tank of oil, but also a large space for the uh, big petroleum boiler I've been talking about. Okay, so it only took, uh, well, a, a lot more cycles, but we're finally pumping all the crude oil out into a whole bunch of liquid reservoirs. 
Um, I don't know if I'm actually gonna build like the entire area right here. I, I just kind of want to lay the groundwork for it. But I figure one way or another, it starts by getting all my crude oil in one place that's easy for me to control, rather than leaving it in one giant lake to go digging around in. You know, oh man, can you imagine bathing into a pool of crude oil? Do wonders for your pores right there, wouldn't it? Hello, the hot polluted oxygen vent has erupted. And it's so hot that it has still broken my steel gas pump. Yikes, dude. Whoa, 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 what is going on here? Whoa, sour gas. Uh, I'm guessing, okay, hang on. I mined out, what the heck? Uh, I don't know how this is happening. So for some reason, there's just two pieces of abyssalite that are unbelievably hot. Um, the temperature is rising through this. This is kind of the petroleum boiler, except that instead of simply increasing the temperature of the oil to become petroleum, it's going so far that it is uh, evaporating into a sour gas, which is kind of off some um, awful stuff. This is just bad, straight up. This is really bad. Why, why is this little tiny bit of abyssalite so freaking hot? Okay, that seems to have stymied the flow a little bit. Wow! On the other hand, here's a little petroleum. 100 kilograms of the stuff, in fact. So, proof of concept, I guess, kind of? This does make for a good cautionary tale, though, of what happens if you overheat your crude oil, right? Because now you know. There's a delicate sweet spot here. It's not just about pumping as much heat into crude oil as possible and getting petroleum out of it. You do that too much, you get sour gas, and you can't do anything with this. So there is a trick around that. I'll show you. But uh, yeah, there's boundaries. Too cold, you get oil. Too hot, you get gas. Okay, so it's taken me a good long while to get to this stage, but I think we're almost ready to continue with building up our oil boiler. Currently trying to transition a lot of the fluid out of here because, well, I'd like to I'd like to have this all in one big spot and I can try to turn this into my boiling area. So what I've done is I basically built a kind of dam to kind of um, shore off the two sides right now. But this is gonna end up being our, what do you want to call it? Thermal spike spine, thermal tap? I kind of like the idea of calling it a thermal tap, that works, yeah, okay. So what we're doing is we're building down some insulated tiles plus some ladders just for access with two spots in between. And we're getting all the way down to the magma and the obsidian crust. Now I want to note that this is unbelievably hot now, there's no abyssal light protecting us. We are dealing in the many, many hundreds, if not over 1500 degrees Celsius. In order to continue with this, we need to take advantage of the fact that dupes can build diagonally safely. They cannot build straight down, otherwise the magma is going to start flowing up. It's extremely high pressure right now. But if we want to build, let's say, a diamond window right here, right, and dig this tile out, they can get here, they'll dig this and build the tile, but most importantly, this area and this area are still blocked so the magma doesn't go anywhere. So you have to be very careful at this stage. And then once we got the first few layers of diamond figured out, it should get a lot easier for me to start stacking it up slowly, bit by bit, until we get up to about, mm, let's say, this point. Believe it or not, one of the biggest bottlenecks I'm having while trying to build this stuff right now is not actually uh, having diggers and constructors. They're actually able to do their job you know, reasonably quickly. I mean, it still takes a few cycles for a large project, but they're getting around. The biggest issue I'm running into uh, is that for some reason, uh, no one wants to pick anything up anymore. Like, at all. No one wants to be my sweeper. Cannon fodder is the only reliable person that I've got. All right, by the way, notice here, magma, not going anywhere. Build the diamond, boom. Got it, okay. Now I need to do the same thing over here, but I should be able to safely place this and dig this area out. Well, no, no, I can't actually, wait a minute. No, sorry. First, aha, I need to place a diamond tile here. That way I can dig this out and then place a tile here to access the magma and it won't be able to flow anywhere. See, this is where I'm saying that the order of this is extremely important. Mess this up and you're begging for death. Here's a fun fact, by the way, I'm looking at this. It's so hot that the gold amalgam that was sitting here is liquefying into gold and then immediately reheating into refined gold. Ha! <laughs> That's kind of fun. I wonder, honestly, if I use this strategy carefully, could I maybe 
dump a bunch of unrefined materials down by the magma, let them liquefy, solidify, and use a uh, auto sweeper to rapidly pick them up and send them somewhere else. Would this be a way of refining my metals, like, for free? Of course, that only worked for a little while. Now the gold is, like, completely liquefied and it is staying that way. It's so stupidly hot. Okay, now that we've built this up to about this level, we should be able to build out some more tiles. I need metal tiles here. I don't know if you actually could make this work with just the glass, but we'll do metal here. I'm going to make it out of steel, obviously, because steel can handle a pretty significant amount of heat. The melting point is... 2500 degrees Celsius, and we're not getting up to that point. No other metal I have can handle that, so steel is my only option. Okay, now that we have those tiles, we need to place an airlock. And yes, by the way, I have a fair bit more steel now. I have been doing nothing but make steel for the last, like, 30 cycles. It's been really, really irritating, but anyway. So we need to place down a mechanical airlock over here, and you might look at that and say, well, that seems kind of weird. What do you want to do with an airlock? Well, remember, I've talked about this before, vacuums do not have any form of thermal conductivity. I mean, how can they? There is no medium, no gas, no solid, no nothing, through which uh, heat is able to transfer. So if you take advantage of a mechanical airlock and fully seal it off with a couple more metal tiles up over here, for example, when you open it, there's no gas to fill the space. It's just an empty vacuumous void. Which means, with a little bit of power and automation and some temperature sensors, what I can do is uh, intentionally open or close the airlock if I want to prevent or encourage any more thermal energy from rising up through my thermal tap. So it's a way of completely, totally controlling the number of DTUs that get up into an oil reservoir up over here. Okay, with this done and out of the way, um, next thing to do is actually going to be to start building up some temp shift plates. Probably making use of diamond again because of really good thermal conductivity. Reason being, um, if we are going to be uh, dropping our oil down here, we want that heat to very rapidly disperse across a large pool of oil. Rather than just heat up one little tile at a time and then just keeps rising and sinking. It's a lot easier to control the temperature if we do something like this. So that's what I'm going for. But note that with this uh, airlock closed, we are still transferring heat at a surprisingly efficient rate. So this is working as intended. I just need to get a thermo sensor to open up this door and it will block everything. Okay, now that we've got some scaffolding going around this area, we can finally start planning out the next area of this boiler. And this is gonna take a little while to build, but it's okay. So, I need to basically create a long chamber, probably going all the way out over here. Uh, actually, maybe not this far. I'm not sure the liquid will be able to... No, it should be able to. That should be fine. Yeah, we'll do something kind of like this. Now, it's gonna look a little bit like a weird... Um, I guess the best way to describe it is kind of a... One of those old Mario King Kong games, um, where we're going to have a long set of ramps. That's going to go down something kind of like this. And then down over here as well. That kind of a thing. And it's going to get capped off here and capped off here. Like this kind of an idea, right? Here we go. Here we go. All right. It's amazing how fast these guys can work when they put their mind to things. Again, it's the stinking sweeping that takes forever. But all right. We're almost done with all this. So you kind of see what I mean when I say that this looks like an old Mario game, right? You know, like the ladders, you just kind of run up and it's like, dirt, 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 and the little barrels are going down, boing! It's trying to get up to King Kong and save, uh, what was it? It wasn't Princess Peach. Uh, I remember who it was before. Anyways, who? Um, so we're getting this all set up, and we're going to have a pump down here, and then now the next thing we need to do is get some... Well, actually, no, the next thing we need to do is get the air out of here. I've created a small little liquid lock using some petroleum. And the reason I'm using petroleum is this is the uh, best liquid I can use that can get up to a very high temperature before it's going to evaporate into a sour gas. So if this stuff gets up above 100 degrees, I don't have to worry about water turning into steam, right? That kind of a thing. Much better for a quick liquid lock system. Um, let's go ahead and close this off and let's start turning this into a big vacuum. Unfortunately, this is a lot of very temporary duct work that needs to be done over here. There's a lot, but oh well, needs to be done. You don't technically need to have three pumps like I'm doing. I'm just looking at this and thinking, it's going to take forever for gas way down here to gradually work its way up the one tile and then one tile up to this last pump. I'd rather just temporarily have one on each level and just make this go fast. Okay, while well, this is getting cleaned out and pumped out, let's go ahead and start planning out some plumbing. So we're going to place down a liquid vent, let's say, right over here. 
I'll build it out of gold amalgam, though I don't think we need to worry too much about temperature. And then we need radiant pipes. Now, this is the reason I've held off on doing this until I had the gold volcano going, because we're going to need a lot of radiant pipes, and that means a lot of gold. The good news is my gold volcano has produced something on the order of 15 tons of refined gold since I started uh, this episode five hours ago. No, I'm not kidding. So, let's go ahead and place down a whole mess of radiant pipes. Basically, the radiant pipes just kind of function as a sort of, um, I guess kind of a heat exchanger, really, more than anything else. You could do it without this step, right? Just dump the oil in, let it turn into petroleum, and immediately suck this stuff up. You could do that, skim it off the top, but... I mean, the way I see it, this is just going to cool down the petroleum to reasonable levels and preheat the oil so I don't need as much uh, temperature from the magma. Which isn't really an issue, to be fair. It's not like there isn't plenty of DTUs in this giant magma pool. It will take me eons to uh, suck enough heat out of the core of the planet that this stuff all turns into, uh, into some sort of solidified rock. But, I don't know. You get the idea. Finally, we have achieved vacuum. All right, we are just about done. Finally. <laughs> Let's deconstruct all this nonsense. Just a last little bit of cleaning. Just a last little bit of cleaning. Thank you, Cannon. Now, we just plug this thing up. And for now, let's go ahead and start heating this area up. All right, so I don't remember the exact temperature you need for the uh, thermosensor. I feel like it's somewhere around 400, maybe 405, 410 degrees, somewhere around there. Regardless, uh, let's go ahead and start heating this up. Wow, this starts heating up so fast. Seriously, this heats up unbelievably quickly. That took like no time at all. Holy crud. That's actually too fast. Like literally, now if I dump oil in this, it's going to turn into sour gas. I have to let this thing cool down now. Too much, guys. Too effective. At what temperature does petroleum vaporize? 540 degrees Celsius. Yeah, there's a window between like 400 and 540. You can't let it go above that point. So I have to let this get down to that temperature at the very least. That's when I can start pumping in some oil. And we're finally below 540. Okay, so now for plumbing. We hook up some oil and out it goes. All right, moment of truth. Here comes the oil. It's going to get dumped in here. Some of it will immediately turn into petroleum. It's going to rapidly cool down these metal tiles, and then it's going to start leaving behind crude oil. I'm going to set the thermosensor to just be, like, basically off. Leave the door closed completely until this thing gets submerged. Otherwise, if I set this to the correct temperature now, it's going to heat up the tiles, but not necessarily the oil in time, and then it's going to suddenly turn into sour gas. So let's drop it off. Okay, we've got some crude oil. Some of it's already turned into petroleum. No, 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 no. Green, that, that, stop, yes. Okay, all it takes is a split second, and look how much freaking heat we got in here all of a sudden. Oh, God, that got close. Okay, this is where things start getting really tricky, because I need this to get, like, fully submerged, please. Okay, I think I might finally have it. What I did is I just got enough oil in here and then turned off the flow, got it up to temperature, turned it all into petroleum, so now as I trickle it in... You can see that it already is basically up to temperature around the thermo sensor, so it's reacting around the couple degree changes. And then this thing starts turning on and off as necessary, like that. Perfect. So we got a little bit more heat, then it quickly turned off. Then we get more heat, then it quickly turns off. And we're just going to keep doing this basically as long as I've got oil. And that, my friends, should be a fully functioning petroleum boiler. The only thing left to do now at this point is to hook up the petroleum pump just so I'll be able to start dumping it into some reservoirs, of which I have nowhere near enough reservoirs, but we'll get some power and stuff set up a little bit later. Oh my god, you know, it's, it's satisfying after, I guess we're going on almost six hours now, six hours of work, it's really satisfying to see things come together like this, you know what I mean? And now the petroleum is starting to pool up at the pump. Okay, so just as one last check, what's the oil look like? It gets to about 81 degrees Celsius before it enters the system. By the time it gets here, it's 340 degrees, pre-primed and ready to go, right? And then the petroleum, the game would slow down for a second here, uh, 400 degrees, but by the time it gets down to the end, the petroleum's down to about 57 degrees? It's gonna get a little bit warmer than that. I'll bet you this equalizes close to 80. So yeah, we're taking 80 degree oil and preheating it, and then we're taking our super hot petroleum and pre-cooling it down to something reasonable like 80 degrees Celsius. Holy crap, it worked! At this point, I'm limited by only a couple of factors. Can I keep putting oil into the system? And the answer is yes, I have many, many dozens of tons left to go, plus all this up here. 
And how much heat can I extract from the core of the planet? And the answer is a freaking lot. So we're set, guys. For once, I've produced something, and it's sustainable, and will last for pretty much the rest of the game. If I need more oil, the next thing to do will be to go to some of these oil reservoirs and start actually extracting the oil and pumping them into one big reservoir. But we'll have to worry about that later because I'm exhausted, and this took way, 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 way too long to record. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode where I accomplished something and did it well. So please hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, make sure you hit that notify bell, and I will see you guys next time.